Let's welcome our, on board Ajay Kumar Bhalla, the power secretary himself, joining in on the show right now. Mr. Bhalla, thanks so much for taking the time out and uh, joining you today. First up, really under discussion is, uh, you know, the RBI circular, uh, which came about uh, on Friday evening. Wanted to understand what's your view on the same and how do you see that impact the power sector as such? See, that circular is quite a balanced circular. I mean, I uh, feel it is a, uh, it's a, it, it sort of uh, puts the equal responsibility on the lenders also. If you delay the resolution plan, uh, you have to make more provisioning. And uh, there are time limits on, in which one should resolve these assets. See, uh, lenders have gone through a long uh, rope. The previous circular, the Supreme Court's uh, involvement and that uh, circular getting struck down, sufficient time has been given to the lenders now, uh, we should have resolved the whole process. Only thing that it was 100% consent versus now it is 75% by value and 60% by numbers. So that perhaps gives a little extra benefit that lenders can take quick decisions. So I feel it's a quite a balanced one, lenders need to take quick decisions now. And if they are not able to reach a decision, they better than take the asset to IBC. Right, fair point. But in the thermal sector, uh, stressed assets also remain an issue and a very high level committee was looking into it. What's the update on the same? And if you could tell us about the various schemes that are being mulled to help bring stressed uh, power assets back on track. See, the high level committee basically tried to address some of the sectoral issues which were mainly related to coal, payment security mechanism and the third part was the gas uh, based power plants which are under stress. The coal related issues have mostly been resolved, orders have been issued after approval of cabinet and uh, wherever some modalities were to be formulated or have been formulated or under the process. So we expect that some of the plants which did not have coal linkage should be able to uh, have get the linkage now. Shakti uh, second round of link auction has also taken place and uh, increase in the auction quantity and other things now we are pushing for all those things. So coal side of it we do not see any issue because most of the issues got resolved. Two issues which I said one is the payment security mechanisms on which we are working again that what, what best methodology can be adopted for ensuring that discoms make regular payments and third of course is the gas based plans for which we are ready with a, a new scheme. Uh, with, which can be launched to see whether some of the gas based plants can also be revived. Sure. Mr. Bhalla, you know, while we have you, how do you also intend to oversee the revival of uh, gas power plants? What will be the policy, you know, on that front uh, and uh, also on the plans for gas pooling, if you could share some light? See, we initially. Uh, there was a scheme uh, brought out of, of the uh, support of Power System Development Fund uh, which uh, sustained some of these uh, plants for about six quarters I would say and then the tariff came down and the uh, gas prices also fell. Now again the market is quite okay, the demand is high, the gas prices also international prices of gas is uh, on the lower side. So if we are able to get some concessions in form of VAT uh, relaxation and less charges by gale for uh, transporting the uh, gas through their pipelines and with little bit of uh, financial support we expect that some assets of uh, we can easily support and revive these. But, but our scheme has to be formulated uh, and uh, cabinet approval to be obtained. Okay. So it is high on our agenda. Sure. And what will be the stance vis-a-vis uh, -vis the renewable space versus thermal? Any plans to come out with the UMPP? We have uh, made our uh, UMPP documents, uh, we have revised those documents. Uh, if you recall one UMPP was, uh, once it was uh, bid out, there were not many bidders. So we have made some changes in our bid documents. Of course, presently uh, uh, we are resolving some of the earlier UMPPs which had coal blocks here marked and those have not uh, gone through. So we need to uh, work little more as far as UMPP is concerned. Renewable definitely we need to achieve our target of 175 gigawatt 
uh, on which uh, we are working uh, very seriously. Uh, we have brought in one or two schemes uh, which will bring, uh, bring flexibility uh, like blending of uh, renewable energy along with thermal by companies like NTPC. So, we have already uh, formulated this scheme and now we are discussing the matter with the regulator that how quickly a regulation can be formulated to activate this scheme. So, we definitely feel that uh, it's, uh, it will be encouraged uh, uh, along with uh, standalone uh, efforts of uh, MNRE ministry, we will also be doing blending using our thermal plants. Also wanted to understand about uh, Uday 2.0, elaborate in terms of the kind of details and timelines that you may have set. See the Uday targets many states have achieved on, or close to achieving it, but uh, March 19 was the uh, deadline for most of the states to reach 15 percent losses, which in many states it has not been able to. So, we need to sit with those states and look at what has gone wrong with them and when will they be able to achieve the target of 15 percent. So, we need to redraw those lines and if there are what are the shortcomings in the system. Uh, which uh, need to be strengthened. So, along with this uh, redrawal of uh, trajectory, we would be looking at what in case let us say I mean high loss areas, what should be done? Can we bring axial bunch cables? Can we bring underground cabling there? So, or smart metering. So, what are the areas where the discoms have not been able to control losses? We would like to supplement our existing schemes like the India Lupadhyaya Gram Jyoti Yojana or IPDS to supplement uh, efforts to ensure that the losses are checked. Basically, if the losses are checked and I mean the billing efficiency has gone up, the collection efficiency has gone up, but still there is certain area where the uh, which is still left out. So, high loss areas we will we need to supplement the discoms with the support uh, which will bring infrastructure to check these losses and redrawal of the this thing. The uh, tariff petitions have were being filed very regularly. There have been some slackness in some states in the during the last year, which we are now again uh, taking up with those states that you should immediately uh, file the tariff petitions. There was an order of aptal few years earlier that regulators have so much power of uh, uh, fixing tariff if the state uh, discoms are not filing tariff petitions. We have reiterated those instructions that wherever uh, if the state uh, discom is delaying filing of tariff petition, regulators should uh, uh, take up the matter suo moto and fix the tariff. Mr. Bella, you know, what about plans for uh, new PPAs? Uh, also, with regards to stranded assets, uh, you know, any plans on how you intend to deal with those? See, if we look at the stranded assets which are commissioned, there we have definitely a clear action plan that what can be done. 1900 megawatt as I said, we, we had contracted earlier, last year the power has started flowing. 2500 megawatt we have um, had gone another round of bidding and now we are working with the discoms to buy this power also in the medium term. So, I mean uh, if I look at, I mean there is another 6 to 7000 megawatts of commission capacity left which we need to resolve. We see now state governments of Madhya Pradesh, state governments of Gujarat coming up with uh, uh, looking for coal linkages for fresh bidding, fresh round of bidding and all, where some of these assets can get uh, uh, can get coal and uh, start supplying power, they will get PPAs. So, I mean uh, if I look at the growth trajectory and the kind of uh, capacities we have. Uh, it is a matter of time that uh, most of the commission capacities we should be able to resolve over a period of next one year or one and a half year. Right. Also wanted to understand about uh, you know the need for renewable en energy projects uh, and uh, at a time when the existing ones are stranded. Also if you could give us uh, your response on the formation of uh, you know uh, the mega company that's NHPC, SJVN being acquired by NTPC. What, according to you, will be the synergy benefits of this entire process? See, one thing as you said, uh, renewable energy projects have. I mean, there's no uh, 
conflict between the stranded assets and the renewable energy. Renewable energy projects have to come up uh, in the long term that is the uh, uh, energy which is going to contribute largely to the consumption, uh, power consumption in the country. Uh, some of the thermal assets and gas based assets and hydro plants will be definitely used as balancing plants or to meet the peak load requirements when renewable energy is not available. So, a big very proper energy mix after due modeling has already been prepared. We will be placing it in the public domain uh, for energy mix up to 2030 and uh, that takes care of not only the existing capacities, the stressed capacities or whatever new capacities are required in the thermal domain and whatever uh, maximum solar and wind uh, capacities which we would like to do in uh, by 2030 will also be there. Uh, now coming to uh, this uh, acquisition of companies, it is a, I mean if NTPC finds advantage in acquiring a uh, hydro sector company to diversify their portfolio, they can examine that and if uh, it comes to uh, this thing then government definitely will look at it. But the commercial aspects uh, which uh, a company like NTPC need to look at and then take a call. So, I mean as of now if there was a proposal in the last financial year which uh, uh, there was some discussions with government of Himachal Pradesh as far as SJVN was concerned. Uh, now we will look at the things afresh and see whether NTPC uh, can gain extra this thing if they diversify their portfolio then we will discuss with government of Himachal Pradesh and see what best can be done. It has to be in the best interest of the sector. Right. Uh, also, the Ministry of Power had proposed a breakthrough amendment of making 24 by 7 power supply an obligation for DISCOMs. Is this really possible and achievable and can it really be made a reality soon? Yeah, why not? See, we I mean, have spent a lot of money. See, 24 by 7 as far as power supply is concerned is not an issue. The question comes is the infrastructure availability and the second next part would be the health of DISCOMs. Infrastructure wise we have spent lot of money uh, through the India Lopadia Gram Jyoti Yojana on feeder separation and strengthening of infrastructure in villages, in rural areas. Urban areas we are already, I mean I would say we have very good infrastructure and we are only modernizing it. We are putting IT applications in uh, under IPDS and all, uh, SCADA and other so that the automation is there. But in rural areas we are spreading the infrastructure now under uh, various schemes. And Sobhagya had taken the connectivity right up to each household. But the back end strengthening is still going on under the Dindya Lopadhyaya Gram Jyoti Yojana. So if the infrastructure is in place, supplying 24 by 7 power is not an issue. Question would be metering and recovery of the charges. So we are encouraging prepaid metering in our system. In uh, next 3 years time we would propose that we should put all smart meters which, which can function in prepaid mode. Uh, it it, it uh, has to be a cultural kind of change when in the mobile telephony we, we went into lot of flexibility of payment mode. In power sector also we definitely are looking forward to such uh, remarkable changes. So I do not see that 24 by 7 is an issue. Uh, DISCOMs need to work harder, they may have innovative things, they can bring franchises, they can have a supply side companies, they can look at different uh, models which all of us would be working together as a team and trying to ensure that this 24 by 7 sustainable model is, uh, is a reality. All right, Mr. Bala, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, uh, you know, great to get an in-depth perspective Thank from you on all the key uh, uh, developments there with regards to the power space. Thanks so much for joining us this morning.